hello and welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and today on the Rock and Roll Podcast, we have Gentle Savage. They have a new album called Midnight Waylay, which was released on June 17th. Right now, I'm being joined by Tornado to share some more information about this stellar release, where they're going in the middle of the night, why there's a giant ladder leading to the moon on their record cover. So, <laughs> Tornado, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Why? Why there's a giant ladder? Well, that's uh, <laughs> the rock and roll magic. I think uh, you know. Obviously, it looks cool. I think, and uh, I loved comic books since a kid. So you know, there's something comic book like in the in the in the picture, and uh, there are, there are details if you look at it closely. There are funny details. So we don't want we don't want to be. Um, Kind of a serious ban in in the in the bad sense that you know everything has to be very very cool and ultimately blood and skulls and you know that the the, the typical rock and roll stuff. So we wanted to put the magic and the rock and roll and the comic book like things all in the same picture, and I think we managed pretty well. So and and if someone can see what really is in the on the moon, I promise to send a gift. There's okay. something hidden. There's something hidden in the picture. Uh-huh. But you don't see it. Yeah, you have to look very, very, very close. Okay. Well, it's a logo of some kind. It says Gentle Savage. Is that hidden in the picture? Yeah, that's a big one. That's an easy one. <laughs> that's an easy one. <laughs> okay. Like a magic eye. If I stare at it long enough, there's a yacht, and the yacht is called Happiness. Okay. Cool. I definitely did notice that, though. I definitely did notice something, uh, as you mentioned, comic book like yeah. about about the album cover, and then also as well, it looks like there's a UFO that the drummer is pointing to with his drumsticks. Yeah, there is. <laughs> of course, you need a U- UFO. Why? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, interstellar. So, you know, we can travel by the ladders, or we can take the UFO and, and travel further. <laughs> <laughs> Get there much faster. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's just, it's cool. It 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 mixes together. You've got the city in the middle. You've got like the castle off to the side, and then wherever it is, we got the the merry go not the merry go round, but the Ferris wheel. Uh, oh. You know, under the moon. So definitely very cool stuff. Does this artwork? Does it represent the album? Like the album as a whole? Like, are we seeing concepts from songs or themes from songs within this artwork? Yeah, I think so. Um, but and um, maybe even more is the uh, ideology behind the band, the whole the whole story of the band and uh, the things that uh, are combined. You know, the Karelian magic, uh, like like. Um, well, there's a long tradition of uh, magic, or, or or let's say, religion, uh, kind of a uh, old religions in Finland, who uh, all that are sort of uh, forgotten. And then also, uh, I was born in Vienna, a big city uh, in Aus- Austria. So um, there are components of from my life and from my beliefs and from what the boys believe, and uh, also connections to the songs uh, like Karelian magic. Uh, obviously, there is some magic in the picture, and then uh, about the cities, uh, the stories in the song. Uh, and then uh, the rock and roll magic that we all need, because I don't, I don't think rock and roll can really be rock and roll without the certain magic. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking about something. Well, anyway, we need that rock and roll magic, and we need to have <laughs> <laughs> something to sort of look after and uh, something to connect with. And it's a, it's a greater power somehow, I'd say. Yeah. And, what the world brings us together, and so yeah, definitely there there are lots of things I could talk about uh, cover art for for hours, uh, but the the scenery, you know, midnight waylay, waylay ambush, um, the predators move around the midnight, uh, as we all know, and so there is uh, something about the savage uh, theme uh, when when we think about the midnight hunting and uh, you know ambushing someone on the midnight waylay. So, yes, lots of stories. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I figured it was deeper than it is, I don't know, silly, you know, on the uh, 
on the on the front. So that's why I wanted to to chat about, especially when we started getting into, as you mentioned, um, is it proper to call it uh, indigenous people of Finland? Um, yeah. Why not? I mean, I guess, I guess, take us, take us through that. You mentioned some some religions and things that aren't really as I don't know popular or maybe forgotten or whatever. But um, how? What is the? I guess the original culture is that proper to call it? Obviously, in Canada here we have the First Nations. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah. Well, the Finns have come here. Nobody really knows where we came from. Uh, there are theories, but uh, the old religions are um, natural naturalistic. Uh, I guess is the word they 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 come from the nature, and so uh, every healing process and uh, um, the magical uh, the spells, the love spells that we are probably going to talk about. There is a love spell in a real love spell in Karelian magic. It's hidden there. Uh, all that stuff they they uh, uh, they were here before Christianity. And then uh, when this, uh, I think it was the Swedes or maybe the Russians, I don't remember the first ones. I think it was the Swedes who uh, uh, came to Finland and, uh, and they they started to uh, turn us to Christianity. And the, the, the old religions were forbidden and uh, they got slowly, they sort of died away. But the certain, um, let's say the herbal uh, aspect of the healing things and uh, and the old uh, love spells or whatever spells that were sung by the 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 crying or the witcher ladies, they still sort of remained, and we do have um, we do have old old recordings uh, of those uh, those sort of rituals and uh, and the rituals still. Um, they live in our sayings. There are sayings uh, about uh, midsummer or you know uh, Eastern or whatever uh, season, and so the 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 old religions live there deep hidden, but uh, there aren't really people who are like openly practicing them because they're not well. Nobody needs it. Nobody needs uh, religions anyway. But uh, that's a sort of kind of a different aspect because it's not a religion or a belief where someone tells you that this is exactly right. This is how you should do. It's about connecting to the nature, feeling the surroundings, and being kind to people, and uh, you know that kind of stuff. And even if you kill someone or a, or a person or, um, or or an animal. Uh, you don't you don't do it for uh, for anger for example it's pretty much the same as probably you have uh, in in canada or anyone uh, with old beliefs or religions yeah mm-hmm. yeah i'm looking up on wikipedia right now it looks like i'm going to try and say it tieta yeah tieta yeah okay. cool that's kind of like the the shaman yeah cool Very and cool it's, i guess it's surprising it's uh, it's sort of um, the Finns are looking for their roots uh, because uh, this internet world and this COVID thing and everything has uh, sort of distracted people and people are really unconnected, uh, not not only in Finland, but in Finland we have these things uh, that people sort of maybe are looking after again, after, you know, decades or centuries or whatever. So, for example... Um, um, I just uh, noticed, uh, bumped into uh, an artist who does these uh, beautiful uh, tarot cards, but they are um, uh, made out of the Finnish mythology. So you can can have a full tarot pack, card, tarot card pack uh, filled with uh, Finnish uh, those uh, mythological creatures. Uh-huh. Yeah, so people are looking after those. And uh, and uh, they are very beautiful. And uh, in a, in a way, if you understand it on a deeper level, I mean, any belief system or it's very dangerous to say religion because people always think when you talk about a religion that it's you know the Christianity or Muslims or whatever. But it's I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something um, deeper that is more natural. So everything comes to the same in the end. But uh, 
yeah, it's very cool that people are looking for uh, values again. And uh, and if you if you think about a rock show or if you think about a, a rock band or or the band and the fans, it's it's kind of a it's a ceremonial thing when you go to a rock show, and uh, and uh, you you get connected, you f- you can feel the energy. So it's everywhere. Every, it's just a rock show, and uh, yeah. so yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Well, you had mentioned you know the magic of, of rock and roll is kind of missing, and I think um, for sure that's definitely the uh, mystery and aura that used to surround a band where you. You had to be a part of the fan club to get anything extra, or yep. you had to be able to get backstage. You know that was a big thing to be able to actually meet these people. <clears throat> uh, whereas now, especially in the last two years of the pandemic, they they have to be available to everybody on Instagram. So that that whole thing is kind of kind of gone for the most part. Yeah, and you know the <laughs> biggest stars they they. They show uh, in their they they let people see their colon in their shows, you know, uh, you know, going to the doctor, you know. So uh, it's very strange that everything goes by the. In the end, it's about money and the and the power and the fame. But but uh, I think it's cool that there are people who are still stubborn and they do what they like. The uh, uh, one of my favorite favorite. Um, Rock stars, uh, uh, deceased Lemmy Kilmister, who who uh, truly was something that he really was, and Ronnie James Dio, the people they really lived what they preached, and uh, that's the way it should be. There's no good, there's no bad, there's no right or wrong. If you just don't go out hurting people for a meaning, uh, for just doing it because of hurting, mm-hmm. and so that's what I like about rock and roll or anything. That gives you freedom to think, freedom to feel, freedom to do what you want. And, uh, yeah, so, again, we're talking about the same thing. We could talk about religion. If it's a it's a, a natural thing or a, a natural, what, what, what's the word in English? You know, the, uh, the religions that are original, that come from the nature. There's a word for it. Paganism. Uh, no, well, you could call that, but here in Europe, if you if you say paganism, it's it has a certain clang that it's not. Uh, I think there's a well. Anyway, there's another word for it. <laughs> it, but, it, it, <laughs> got de- it. It got demonized by Christianity for uh, a very long time. So there certainly is that. Uh, I could maybe think about something else other than like an, an indigenous religion or a pagan religion, but it, it means. Um, yeah, immediately somebody might go, oh, that's witchcraft and they're casting spells on children, which is just ridiculous. Uh, it would be, or they're Satanists, which is another thing. No, uh, it, it paganism to me means that you're connecting with the earth and the elements and um, the seasons, the true seasons, not the calendar that we have now. And, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. That is paganism. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mentioned some love spells. So if I listen to Corellian Magic, I will look at my wife a different way because... <laughs> no, your wife will look at you. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Perfect. Take us through this love spell. Yeah. Well, there's a... there's a The love spell is a... Um, okay. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. I'm, I'm going to tell you the secret here. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody who's listening, just can it. Nobody listen. Don't listen to this. Okay, so the, in the in the beginning, there's this this strange mumbling when you listen to Karelian magic, and that's um, uh, I found the uh, love spell. It's sung by the the uh, ladies, the crying ladies, um, and it's a love spell for making someone to really fall in love with you. I found it on the Finnish uh, art archives. They have. Like tons of uh, material there, and uh, this was from, uh, I think it was about 100 years old or something. And uh, we did some magic to the to the um, uh, sequence also, and then we sort of slowed it down a bit, and then we turn it uh, turn it um, you know backwards. And uh, because you know <clears throat> people can <laughs> listen to it now backwards and get the real meaning out of it. So that's my way of joking about those, uh, well, you know, the people who 
used to play when we when um, when the um, uh, LPs were more popular vinyls. Uh, people used to listen to records and try to find the satanic uh, messages. So there is a love message hidden backwards in in the beginning of Karelian magic. Yeah. yeah, that's what makes you savages gentle. Because instead of <laughs> I hope sat- so. yeah, instead of saying that Paul is dead or other yeah. satanic messages, you guys are trying to get people to fall in love. So this is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like there was quite a bit of production that went into this record. So. Uh, maybe spend a couple of minutes chatting about the production team uh, cool. that went yeah that went into the record. Yeah, well, uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm the uh, executive pro- producer, uh, but I also produced um, uh, sen- seven of those songs, like from the uh, uh, from the beginning to the end. But the Karelian Magic and Honey Bunny was were produced by a friend of mine. He's a very uh, very popular musician in Finland, uh, Timo Kamaranen. He's a guitar player, great, great guitar player. And uh, he produced those two songs. Um, we had uh, a bit of problems with the band by that time. So, And uh, I had already set up uh, dates for the recording. So I had to use some um, friends to play uh, parts of the song they, they weren't really in the band by that time and uh, we used the studio musicians partly and uh, on Karelia Magic and Honey Bunny and Timo produced uh, and then there was uh, this uh, uh, mixing engineer Jesse Voinio he's a uh, they say I don't know because I don't follow that much uh, the business but they say that he's one of the best uh or high, highest valuated uh, mixing engineers in Europe uh, on certain stages. He, for example, this might give you an idea. He he, he has a Billboard number one um, a record, uh, but it's a classical record. And when you do classical music, you really got to have golden ears. It's it's like, well, try mixing one a symphony or symphony orchestra. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Somewhere yes, between one or maybe two microphones, three microphones, four microphones, maybe tops, unless, of course, they've got budget. Uh, well, that that's a high budget thing. So they they that was like a huge production. Anyway, so yes, the mixing, uh, and uh, then uh, we had Yuka Purla, is also a, a very popular uh, musician and uh, recording or mixing engineer. We recorded. Uh, we used two different studios, oh no, three different studios in Finland. Now, there's an awesome studio, SF Sound. Uh, check out the pictures of SF Sound if you can find it. Uh, uh, it's in Karelia, in the Finnish Karelia countryside, and it's by the river, and uh, it's it's, uh, it's just an, such an inspirational place, if you... If you and uh, the same... Same guy who has worked with uh, with the top studios in the world uh, is behind the uh, uh, structure of the engineering of the studio. So it's a very very good place to do stuff, and uh, it's a peaceful 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 place. You can go go there, and you know you don't have to meet anyone. You can just yeah play. It's a cool place. So. That's uh, mainly the the team behind, and then of course the um, the cover art. Uh, it's uh, the ideas were by me, and then my friend Vin Valentino is also a musician. Um, uh, he did the cover art, most of the cover. Oh, he did the uh, album covers, but the single singles. I think there's one or maybe two single covers that were made by a friend of mine, Elisa, a lady. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess. Cool. Yeah, I'm on the website right now. Everybody's listening. Check out sfsound.fi, SF Sound Studio. These are these are the cool studios. I mean, obviously, everybody in Finland wants to go to Sonic Pump. I get it. I chat with a lot of Finnish bands who are doing their stuff at Sonic Pump, spending some time in the sauna. But I mean, this is cool. I dig this. Um, I live in right next to the Rocky Mountains, and there are some recording studios that are situated in the Rocky Mountains, and it's just so nice to 
you know, sit at a mixing console and look out the window and you've just got nothing and you can just work. And this kind of reminds me of that where you just, you can just go out somewhere private and work. Unless of course you want to be in the middle of Helsinki, you know, nothing wrong with that, but, yeah. uh, this is, this is cool. I dig it. Yeah. And the sound, uh, uh, SF sound and, and the environment and the, everything, you know, the desks and uh, the microphones and everything, it's top quality. It's really top quality. So yeah. if someone in Canada wants to record in Finland, go to SF, SF Sound. <laughs> really, it's a cool yeah. place. Yeah, I'm going down through their uh, equipment list, and they have everything. They have everything. Yeah, I can't see anything that they wouldn't be here that I wouldn't want. I just recently recorded some guitars with a... Mesa Boogie and a Marshall Cab and an SM57 and an uh, AKG C41. It's all here. Right there. Right there, baby. Sweetness. Cool. Okay, so we chatted about comic book artwork as part of the inspiration for the album cover. We dove into the album cover itself, how it pertained to the uh, tracks on the album. So we've got nine tracks on the album. So we talked about introduction. I said, why is there a ladder to the moon? We even found out you could take the UFO if you don't want to take the ladder. We also chatted about uh, there is a proper name on the internet. I closed that page, however, but I'll just say Finnish indigenous religions. And we also chatted about Corellian love spells. So if you listen to Corellian magic in reverse, you'll fall in love or someone will fall in love with you. We even got in some Mythologia Fenica Tarot, which takes a lot of those uh, old traditions and turns it into tarot cards, which I think was super cool because for anybody out there who understands tarot, that might be a really fast way to start to understand the Finnish perspective on things. Because if you know like what the death card means and they have whatever, then like, oh, that person is representative of death or tower or the hangman or the hermit or whatever. And SF Sound Studio, we also chatted about the production Team, is there anything that we missed that the manager said we were supposed to talk about that we didn't talk about? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe uh, maybe our. I think we're pretty cool now, uh, so we could talk about the songs if you wish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's something that really uh, because it's been a long rocky road since we started. It was in 2019, and uh, it was in 21 when we. Uh, finish the record so there's a lot of things going there's there's been a lot of things going on yeah but i think okay. the manager is pleased with uh with uh, uh introduction now <laughs> okay <laughs> very cool uh yeah because we chatted about Corellian and magic the other track we were going to chat about today was you never ask me why um what would you like to say about you never ask me why what am i never asking you why about well <clears throat> It's just a phrase from the. Um, uh, it's, it's a kind of a bridge, uh, bridge part in in the middle before the chorus, and uh, the idea of the story is about a vamp vampire cowboy. Uh, I have to tell you, I'm not a vampire, neither a cowboy, but uh, it's a character that was born in my head. I was on a sick leave, uh, maybe a year year or two ago, and uh, well, you know, Netflix and. Uh, sick leave that makes uh, a man do strange things so i watched some uh, clint eastwood the good and the bad and uh, then don't tell anyone this one okay so i watched okay. the whole <laughs> i watched the whole uh, what's the the saga the uh, twilight saga yeah you know the the vampire vampire stuff and uh, wow uh, for some reason this <laughs> character was born in my head this vampire cowboy and he was walking around the city. I, I very often see songs as a sort of a cinematic uh, stories. I see them at the same time when I when I start writing. So I saw this vampire cowboy walking around, and he he uh, notices this lady on the on the street or wherever, standing by her house, and uh, he sort of sings to the lady, "You never ask me why," and uh, you too proud to say to too proud to say hello and blah blah blah. So that's where the you never ask me why wow. uh, comes from. And uh, it's a funny song. Uh, 
at the beginning it was a kind of a I don't know if it sounds terrible if I play to you play to you but it was a kind of a so so it really sounded like a Clint Eastwood movie tune so I brought it and then I arranged it arranged it um, to sound like it does on the on the record because it's that 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 was funny, but it didn't really work. Mm-hmm. Uh, choruses, um, choruses uh, again. It's I think that vampire cowboy finds the love that he's after. He's looking for eternal love. You know, vampires they don't they don't need, need mortal love. They need immortal love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're playing so, for keeps. Yeah, want to keeps. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he finds it. He finds the love and. Uh, uh, for some reason, the song grew. I think it's like one one of my friends said that it's a. Uh, it sounds first that it's not a it's, a. it's not a very big song, but then it sort of grows to the end. And I don't know how it happened. It just happened. Didn't mean to. I really mm-hmm. didn't mean. To. But we started doing and started working on it. And just found layers and layers more and more and more. And uh, and uh, in the end, when the boys heard the. Uh, the final version, it was like, it's the same song. <laughs> it's the same song. I don't, I don't recognize. It was really, it was really, we did a lot of uh, tricks with Yes, the mixing engineer. And, and uh, um, so we got the soundscape uh, right and so on. So it was really cool. Yeah. It was really, but I like, I like the way we think of, of songs that uh, we play everything live. First of all, we play live and, uh, uh, we use the click of of course, but uh, we don't correct that much. So you can hear, you can really hear what it sounds like when it's played for real. Like if we play it here, it sounds quite the same, the basic song. But um, and uh, and uh, in the beginning, before I start doing the vocals, we, we we try to keep it as thin as possible. So you probably understand what I mean because if we play too. Um, if we, if we try to pack it up too much, then the vocals sort of they don't fit. It's easier to fit the vocals in and then do the rest, rest of the magic. So that's how we work. Uh, the band plays live, and then we take the right, uh, 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 right version. Usually, we don't play more than three takes, and that's enough. And the boys are just so they're just so damn good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and. Uh, I think there are songs on the on the record that are the first takes. Uh, Run, run, poor boy is probably the first take, and uh, uh, after all, might be also the first take. Uh, and then the rest of them are second or third takes. Yeah. Usually, the problem is just the tempo. If it's not exactly the right tempo, then then we sort of change it a bit, and uh, that gives it the the, the vibe to it so i can work i can finish up i do all my vocals here at home i have a small studio here you don't probably see it much but <laughs> anyway that's the yeah. way it goes cool all right nifty production tip everything was done live on the floor to a click but not i don't know what you want to call it anal right. retentively to a click nothing was chopped up to the grid uh which is good awesome uh that concludes all of my questions for everybody listening in today in the show notes down below the video, if you're watching on YouTube or on the website, therockmetalpodcast.ca, or if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Music, in the show notes is going to be gentlesavagerockband.com, where you can check out more stuff from the boys, as well as links to the two tracks that we chatted about today on YouTube, Corellian Magic, and You Never Ask Me Why. So I believe that that concludes all of my questions we finished up by chatting about you never asked me why the production on the record was done live off the floor to a click but not edited to the grid which is important and vampire cowboys which is super cool uh vampire cowboy i think should you know become a thing like you give him a name he shows up somewhere on the on every record he kind of becomes your uh what's that guy from iron maiden eddie eddie yeah <laughs> why not why not yeah, yeah why not you eddie <laughs> yeah yeah, you, can, you can see that there's also already a, um, a, is it character? Yeah, character 
on the on the lyric video it's it's pretty close to to a mascot already so we've been thinking about it so yeah. thanks for the you you, you uh, it's a good one yeah you should you give yeah. him a give him a nice finish name like Vile or UC or something <laughs> yeah Vile thunder lightning <laughs> <laughs> beautiful all right well thank you so much for coming on to the rock metal podcast today tornado thank you for asking me hey can we take a picture I'd like to share it on, on, on social media. Is it okay for you? Yeah, go ahead. One more. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not in. Yeah. There you go. Oh, cool. I think we're done. Okay. Thank you, Jan, so much. Thank you. Thank you.